One of the deepest classes in years, featuring the tightest Rookie of the Year vote since 2003. Here are the top 10 NBA rookies from this season. Number 10. Nishan Bones Highland while a cool nickname for sure, Bones also refers to one of the concerns regarding Highland coming out of VCU. Scouts questioned whether he was too skinny to contribute in the league, but from the early days of Summer League, Bones showed there was plenty more to his game that makes up for the lack of muscle. His ability to shift gears and change speeds in an instant constantly keeps defenders on their toes. As a rookie, Bones blew by his fair share of defenders and also demonstrated a nice finishing touch around the rim, primarily relying on floaters. On the defensive end, he was a pest playing with high energy and using his lengthy wingspan to bother ball handlers and disrupt passing lanes. Although he didn't receive big-time minutes, Bones made the most of the time he was given, averaging 10.1 points in less than 20 minutes played per game. He showed flashes of being able to take over a game at any point, too. The only knocks on his rookie season were that he didn't make shots consistently, shooting 40.3% from the field. And he could be a better distributor, as he averaged 2.8 assists per game. Regardless, Bones proved he belongs in this league and will serve as a solid backup for Jamal Murray once he returns from injury. Number 9. Chris Duarte Had the season ended earlier, Duarte would have found himself a few slots higher than this. He got off to a blazing hot start, averaging just under 18 points in his first eight games, never scoring less than 12 points in any of those games. As the 13th pick in the draft, he seemed like an absolute steal after this fast start. However, that consistency quickly disappeared, as the rest of his season was a roller coaster. There were stretches where Duarte looked unstoppable, but there were others where he looked out of place. Along with the inconsistency, Duarte struggled to stay healthy. He only appeared in 55 games, missing 37. Duarte just started in two total more games than he missed. With all of this being said, the nights where Duarte was feeling it were special. Between the up and down shooting runs, Duarte still wound up averaging 13.1 points per game. When he's on, Duarte is exactly what teams want as a 3 and D wing getting it done on both ends of the floor. Number 8. Ayo Desumu. The majority of second round picks are not asked in their rookie seasons to do what Ayo did. Most guys drafted in the second round bounce around the G League or find themselves watching most games from the bench. And that's exactly what Ayo seemed destined for after his first handful of games. In the Bulls' first five games of the season, he played only a total of 33 minutes. And yet by the end of the year, Ayo's minutes per game average had skyrocketed to 27.4 with 40 games started. Part of this was due to Chicago's backcourt constantly missing games. Games, but it was just as much about Ayo showing he was slept on in the draft. As the season progressed, his role continued to grow, all the way to the point of playing around 40 minutes per game. Ayo didn't put up flashy stat lines, but he was someone Chicago could always count on making over 50% of his shots on the year. In order to continue to earn big minutes next season in such a crowded backcourt, Ayo will need to maintain this efficiency while also adding a bit more production. Number 7. Herbert Jones the Pelicans saw something in Jones when they drafted him 37th overall that they thought others were missing, as they signed him to the second largest contract for a second round pick of all time. Along with paying him more than the industry standard, New Orleans also gave him more playing time coming out of the gates than most rookies get, especially second rounders. Almost immediately, Herb was averaging around 30 minutes per game for the Pelicans. The organization made it abundantly clear that they believed in him and were going to give him every opportunity to prove his worth. And that's exactly what Jones did. While he provided offensive value, Herb really made his presence felt with his defense, averaging nearly two steals per game and just under one block. His play was appreciated enough by the team that his high playing time never decreased over the course of the season. And when it came time for the playoffs, New Orleans actually increased his playing time to just under 40 minutes. The Pelicans demonstrated an unusual level of faith in a second rounder from the start of his career. And thanks to his all-around solid play, they were proven right in having done so. Number 6. Josh Giddy. Not having played college basketball, there was a lot of uncertainty surrounding how Giddy's game would translate to the NBA. He quickly showed that he could do it all, as he averaged 12.5 points, 7.8 rebounds, and 6.4 assists per game. Starting in every game that he appeared in and serving as a Swiss Army Knife for OKC, Giddy brought him four consecutive Western Conference Rookie of the Month awards. The main criticism regarding Josh and his rookie season revolves around his shooting efficiency, as he shot only 41.9% from the field and 26 
46.3% from three-point land. Giddy's rookie season was cut short due to a hip injury that limited him playing in 54 total games. He still managed to make history before this, as at 19 years and 84 days of age, Giddy became the youngest player ever to record a triple-double, doing so in impressive fashion, racking up 17 points, 13 rebounds, and 14 assists. And just for good measure, Giddy recorded a second triple-double at a younger age than the previous record holder, while also adding in two more to finish with four. Number 5. Franz Wagner The team Wagner played for and his playing style seemed to have dictated the conversation about his rookie season. As someone who deserved more praise and recognition, Franz felt the effects of suiting up for a team that finished with the second-worst record in the league, while not playing in a flashy manner, putting up crazy stat lines, or setting history. But those should not detract from the season he had. Wagner exceeded expectations, as he averaged 15.2 points per game without having to take a bunch of shots. His field goal and three-point percentages were 46.8 and 35.4. Teams would love to have a 6'10 big man putting up those shooting numbers. To anybody who watched him, play, Franz had a poise to him and didn't seem to get rattled. The Magic also knew that they could trust Franz to always show up, as he started and played in 79 games this season which were both higher than any other rookie. In other years, Wagner most likely would have been a few spots higher on this list. That's not a slide towards Franz, but rather speaks to how special this class was. Number 4. Jalen Green Green's rookie campaign was a tale of two seasons. As the second overall pick, Jalen's game was supposed to immediately translate to the next level, but that wasn't the case. In his first two months, Green couldn't get into a rhythm, as he shot under 40% from the field and under 30% on three-pointers. He averaged around 14 points per game over that stretch. After an injury sidelined him for the next month, Jalen came back and his shooting got even worse, as his percentages were 32.8 and 23.7 in January. But then in February, things suddenly clicked for Green. The shooting improved drastically and his scoring went up, as he began to look like the guy the Rockets believed in. In March, Jalen's field goal and three-point percentages were just under 50 and 40, as he averaged over 20 points per game. One area that never really improved was his distribution, as he only averaged 2.6 assists per game over the season. Green gets the slight edge over Wagner based on how strong he finished the year. Jalen scored 30 or more points in six of his last seven games, including a 41-point explosion. Green put the league on notice, and if he can score at that rate consistently moving forward, everyone else better watch out. Number 3. Cade Cunningham with any number one pick's rookie season, expectations are going to be sky high, and Cade was no exception. People looked for Cunningham to immediately lift the Pistons out of the Eastern Conference cellar with his smooth play and gifted athleticism. However, that task proved to be easier said than done. As Cade struggled early on to find his groove on the court, the Pistons were losing games. But when Cunningham turned things around, so did the Pistons, and that was no coincidence. In the second half of the season, Cade showed flashes of being the face of a franchise that he was advertised as. Cunningham's ability to impact the team in any particular game became crystal clear. Relying on his athleticism and uncharacteristically large size for a guard, Cade was a matchup nightmare on the nights he was shooting well. However, that was one thing he struggled with throughout the year. His field goal and three-point percentages were just 41.6% and 31.4%. But this didn't stop him from scoring at a high clip, as he led all rookies averaging 17.4 points per game. Cunningham also added in 5.5 rebounds and 5.6 assists per contest, further demonstrating he's the all-around package. Number 2. Evan Mobley Had this list been constructed at or around the All-Star break, Evan would have appeared at a different spot. Heading into the season, not much was expected out of Mobley's Cavaliers, and he wasn't talked about much. Viewed as more of a solid addition with a unique skill set, some people weren't sure how he would fit in with Cleveland's crowded front court. There were also some concerns regarding his lack of strength. After only a few weeks, these conversations were no longer being had as Mobley and the Cavs had taken the league by surprise. The team was winning games as Evan played a key role. Mobley thrived, playing alongside two other seven-footers as he showed his ability to impact the game on both ends of the floor with his athleticism and long length. He helped a team that was projected to finish towards the bottom of the conference be the fourth seed at the All-Star star break, and as a result became the favorite to win Rookie of the Year. However, in the second half of the season, the Cavs couldn't stay healthy, including Mobley, who missed a handful of games. The team struggled, and Evan was forced to play without his tall running mates. As the Cavs lost more games, Mobley slowly found himself losing his hold on being top rookie. Regardless, he established himself as a foundational building block in Cleveland's young core, finishing the year averaging 15 points, 8.3 rebounds, and 1.7 blocks per game. 
Number one, Scotty Barnes. Starting only seven games in college and coming off the bench in the other 17 typically doesn't equal future top draft pick or rookie. While some would assume that that player would need time to develop or even have a lower ceiling, Scotty showed that that's not always the case. While other rookies saw the typical ups and downs of a first season, Barnes was as consistent as a seasoned veteran. He did everything the Raptors asked of him and was crucial in them going on a run in the second half of the season. Scotty became known for doing all of the little things right and never taking a night off. He also was very efficient in his production, shooting 49.2% from the field on his way to averaging 15.3 points per game. Barnes made his presence felt in other ways too, as he was a defensive nightmare for opposing teams. With his lateral quickness and nearly 7'3 wingspan, Scotty was able to guard all five positions and couldn't be taken advantage of in pick and rolls like other people at his height. One thing that stood out about Barnes's rookie season that won't show up in any stat sheets was his presence. He rarely, if ever, looked flustered out there and seemed to belong from day one, as evidenced by the fact he averaged 18.1 points and 8.9 rebounds per game in his first month of pro ball. To win Rookie of the Year in a class as talented and deep as this one speaks volumes to how people around the game view Barnes as a player.